not sure if everybody remembers Fat Joe, but Fat Joe, he's a rapper. He also used to uh, perform with Big Pun. This was like back in the day and then Big Pun passed away, but Fat Joe's still around. So Fat Joe has now become a part of uh, the Democratic Party's hip hop entertainment arm. And we've talked about this before on the show where they have basically prompt up and, and promoted people like Charlemagne the God from The Breakfast Club. Uh, they're getting people from hip hop radio or hip hop artists to basically get the message out to the African-American community to come out and to continue to support Joe Biden. This is how desperate they are now. They have to go to rappers and hip hop radio shows, right? Now they've gone to Fat Joe. And not only did they go to Fat Joe, but Fat Joe actually came to the White House and he met with Joe Biden. Shout out to Case Study QB for this clip. Fat Joe discusses his advocacy for a transparent health care system while praising Joe Biden. So let's get into this, folks. Joe, you have been an enormous advocate for a transparent health care system. I mean, you even released a PSA with, with Rick Ross, with Buster Rhymes, others. Listen to what you have to say. I want everyone to see this. Love our nurses. And we need our doctors. But hospitals and insurers rigging a system to make profits off of people that's in struggle is unforgivable. We demand prices and transparency in health care. How? To the patients. Now, let me tell you why that's weak. If you, it's one thing to demand transparency in health care. It's another thing to say everybody needs to have health care in this country. So it's weak. It's a weak ask right? And I've always told you when you're demanding something, you always ask for more than what you actually want, because they're usually going to give you less than what you ask for. So to me, if Fat Joe was serious about everybody in New York getting some type of access to quality health care or actually having health care, where was Fat Joe when it came down to the New York Health Care Act, right? The New York State Health Care Act was on the table at one point. Didn't hear about that from Fat Joe then. Also, you got to meet with Joe Biden, et cetera. Why didn't you push for some type of universal health care? Our country has the money to pay for it. They got $3.8 billion that goes to Israel. Everyone in Israel has health care. They got billions of dollars that goes to Ukraine. The money is not being spent in the right way. So this is a weak ask from Fat Joe. First of all, you got the best beard of everyone we just saw. I'm just saying for a second there. Don't tell them. <laughs> 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 you know, you, know what, you see it, you see it, I see it. But you have been passionate okay. about this. I'm wondering, given that, are you optimistic coming out of the address last night that at least that portion will be met? Well, I know that's what I was doing there, going for health care transparency. Over 100 million Americans are in debt due to uh, hospital uh, prices. And so I was over there and I was mingling with everybody. So, I, you know, I'm a diehard Democrat, but I stuck in the speaker's gala first because I had pause. So everyone caught that, right? He's a diehard Democrat and he's a celebrity. And that's why he was allowed to come there. That's why he was allowed to have access to them because he's a diehard Democrat. If he was there to criticize Joe Biden or Biden's policies, he would not have been there. to deal with the republicans i'm i'm trying to bring this law through bipartisan mm -hmm. so i went up in there stuck in. he saw me he said fat joe he told his wife yo i got street cred fat joe came to check me then they had an incredible spread of food and in true uh <laughs> fashion i was the first to eat the food there and then i talked to everybody about health care transparency on the republican side then I went to see Hakeem Jeffries, mm -hmm. hung out over there, tore their spread up too. So listen to what's happening here, folks. So he went to go talk to Hakeem Jeffries. Do you get to talk to Hakeem Jeffries? Those of you who live in Hakeem Jeffries district, do you get to go talk to him? No, but the celebrities do. You see how people like Fat Joe and Charlemagne the God and how they can just go walk in Matthew McConaughey and just sit down with politicians and talk to them. 
everyone should have that opportunity. You shouldn't have to be a celebrity or professional athlete to talk to your representatives. They don't talk to us, they run away from us. When we have questions for them, they see us and they run away or they try to dox us like they've done to people like Jose Vega. Do you see how that works? You know, and just hung out with everybody over there and just bringing awareness that America's in a big crisis. You know, a lot of people are losing their homes, losing everything they got due to health care prices. And so that's why I was in there. But now the atmosphere, Lord, this was the Super Bowl of politics. Mm -hmm. So standing room only, I'm upper deck too. I didn't have like a front row. I'm usually courtside at a Nick game. I'm upper deck. <laughs> I don't feel too bad because the governor, Kathleen Holcomb from, from New York, was sitting next to me. So we both was in the cheap seats, right? But we had the time of our lives, the president, vintage Joe Biden. I've been a fan for so many years since he was a senator. He was so sharp. That's another concern. He has been a fan of Joe Biden since Joe Biden was a senator. You want to talk about some of the things that Joe Biden did when he was a senator? We want to talk about the crime bill. Fat Joe, that's who you were a fan of? Because you see, Fat Joe, your music is not adding up. Your music is, is, is not adding up right now. Because the things that you rap about and you're rapping against certain things and you tell me that you've been a fan of Joe Biden since he was a senator, knowing the racist things that Joe Biden has said, knowing the segregationists that Joe Biden has worked with, knowing how his policies actually harmed the black community, and that's someone that you were a fan of. Fat Joe, your music is not aligning with your politics, boo. Because you see, they bring on people like Fat Joe, they get the celebrities to come on to try to convince their fans to support these politicians. Same reason why they bring on Charlemagne the God, because they know The Breakfast Club is probably one of the biggest radio stations in the country. So they know a lot of black people listen to The Breakfast Club. It's a hip hop radio show. So that's the goal, to get the fans to believe that they should still support Joe Biden even though Joe Biden and the Democratic Party is not actually helping the African-American community. He hit every point he had to hit. He was flawless. He was uh, comedic in a way. The whole thing's theater. So you got him making his points. You got the vice president, my girl, Kamala Harris. She's cheering him on. And then you got the speaker behind him making all kind of faces. A lot Man, of this faces. is theater. This and what Fat Joe was doing is theater. You see, so he said, see that? He said, my girl, Kamala Harris, that'll be important when I show you what he's gonna be doing with her. This was the all-star game of politics and I was glad I had a seat in the house. Well, what about those who were in the crowd heckling? Were you surprised by that? What was your reaction when you saw and heard President Biden responding to calls from the audience? And the audience, of course, were members of Congress. It showed that he was sharp. He showed that this wasn't like a scripted thing because mm. he was responding right back to them to whatever they were saying he was responding and um that's and that's because they gave him something we all know joe was hyped up on something come on we all know this so fat joe was here to convince his fans the people who like his music right that joe biden actually is sharp that he doesn't have a problem with his mental acuity. Just the state of politics now, you know, this ain't the back in the days. This is now where you got, you know, everybody screaming out, doing whatever, you know, uh, and that's just the state of politics. That's where we at right now, 2024. Well, let me ask you, I mean, you said you met with Republicans and Democrats. I'm happy to hear that because obviously you have been so passionate. Mm -hmm. You know, the only path forward is the bipartisanship on an issue like that. When you spoke to Speaker Johnson, when you talked to Republicans, did you feel more than the fan love? Did your policies, did your proposals, were those yeah, I resonating? Mean, he told me he was, the Speaker told me he was a health attorney before this and knows all about the issue. Pause. You guys hear this? This is very revealing. So this is Fat Joe, and he met with uh, Mike Johnson here, okay, the new Speaker of the House. So Fat Joe just told you that 
Mike Johnson basically knows all about the issue. Had a former health position. And it's not just Mike, all of them know about the issue. All of them know about the healthcare issue in this country, but they're paid not to give you healthcare. If you're taking money from big pharma, you're not gonna give people healthcare in this country. If you're taking money from the military industrial complex, you're probably not gonna give money, uh, healthcare to people in this country as well, because that's one of the benefits that people get when they join the, 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 the military. That's one of the recruitment benefits that they push towards them. You'll get TRICARE. TRICARE covers almost everything, which is true, it does. So if they were to give everybody health care, that would also decrease military recruitment even more. Same thing is why they don't want to give you free public universities, because that would also decrease recruitment for the military more. And military recruitment is already down. So there's that, too. He said he's all in. And so we love this uh, power to the patients and myself. We love this bill being presented by Bernie Sanders and Senator Bond, which is a bipartisan bill that forces the hospitals to show us the prices. Now, Joe, what's so important about the prices? Well, if you gotta have an MRI, there's a such thing going on right now in the same hospital, they could charge four different, four different prices for four different patients in the same hospital at the same time. So now we wanna know the prices so that we can do our research, look at three hospitals, and it builds competition and it helps you see this? He's talking about healthcare from a capitalist perspective, building competition. Listen to this very carefully, what he's telling you. They're advocating for healthcare transparency. Yes, we should all have transparency. However, they're not arguing for you to be able to have these procedures for everyone to have healthcare in this country. So even if you know the prices ahead of time, which you should, that doesn't help you pay for it, especially if you don't have health insurance. Listen to how he's talking about it though. That creates healthy competition among the hospitals. He basically just trying to advocate for capitalism in the healthcare system. He's not actually asking for something better than what we already have. This is not about a business. This is supposed to be about giving people health care. This is supposed to be about people being able to go into the hospital, have these procedures and walk away debt free the same way they can in countries like Germany, the same way they can in. Well, this might be changing, but in, like in the UK, these things can be done. So you see how he turned this into a business proposition. So, of course, Mike Johnson is going to tell you, yeah, I agree. I'm all in because it doesn't cost the government anything. the Americans. So I'm just spreading the word, talking to everybody, letting everybody know. They all know I'm a diehard Democrat, but they know wow. And then uh, I want to shout out to the Rep. Berrigan because she had never, she's a congresswoman for eight years, she had never been to the Speaker's Gala. So I convinced wow. her, I said, yo, we got to go. And so we started her, she was talking to everybody and we was talking to each other. It was a great event for me. For me, it was uh Amazing. And then I actually bumped into the president. What did he say to you? You, you know, I'm the Forrest Gump of hip hop, man. I'm everywhere <laughs> I need to be. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. I'm walking to all of here comes the president. He says, man, I, I mean, you want to know what he really told me? He said, thank you for being loyal. He said, thank you for being loyal. Mm. And then he hugged uh, Congresswoman, and uh, he shook my hand, and that was that was amazing to me because I had no clue the president was walking right towards me. Listen to what he said. He said Joe Biden told him, "Thank you for being loyal." Right? You know what that basically means in reference to politics, not criticizing him, being loyal. Fat Joe. You know that healthcare is a big issue in this country, and you know how people, are particularly in New York City, your city, need healthcare. Giving people transparency doesn't give them healthcare. If I see that there are three different hospital choices, and for, let's say I need a knee replacement, God forbid, let's say I need a knee replacement, 
Hospital A says it's going to be $800. Hospital B says it's going to be $1,200. Hospital B says it's going to be $1,500. Okay, why well, no? Hospital A is cheaper. It's $800. What does that matter if I can't pay for it? You went all up in there, Fat Joe. I see you advocating for no, no increase in the minimum wage up in this mofo. I see you advocating for a living wage, let alone health care for everyone. I had no clue. And it was it, that was it. That was the that that was amazing. I walked out of there because you know they they locked down the whole Washington DC. And I walked maybe 15, 20 blocks so happy. Just walking, I met the president. I had the time of my life. I had a great time. The American people were there. I mean, it was amazing. I'm gonna tell you something. I think you are the only person in the world who could refer to you as Forrest Gump. So I'm gonna let you do it, but I would never do it. I'm gonna call you Fat Joe the Diplomat, as I'm gonna call you from now on, because wow, the, the, the ambassador in the hallways. I'm so glad that you came. You brought a big smile to my face. Thank you for the advocacy and, the, and what you're talking about for healthcare. Because I'll tell you, I remember a couple of years ago going to the hospital thinking I had like some sort of heart palpitations, and the bill I got caused a heart attack. Okay? I was like, yeah, but you got health insurance. Are you, are you joking? Are you, uh, really? Are you kidding me right now with this? So I understand. And for people who have been in various situations, the cost is obscene. So I'm glad to know that you are making some headway, at least in bipartisanship. Real quick, though, I, I know I got to go. They're telling me I got to get off with you, but I can't help it. I got to ask you, you know, with this upcoming election, your enthusiasm, your charisma is something that people don't necessarily have for the upcoming election. How do you get people to be excited about participating in the elections and voting? You see what I mean, guys? This is what it was all about. Listen to this. I think they are. I think they're just keeping it to themselves. Mm. They're trying to act like they're not really motivated, but they're really motivated and, and, they, and they really know what they got to do. And so on both sides, I feel a big energy you know, I got Trumpers here in Miami with me. They, they they don't stop. And then I got the Democrats up in New York talking about, yo, Joe, we got to go all the way. And so everybody's really, really excited. And now it's crunch time because before it was the primaries. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one, let's go. Let's get the business. And Joe Biden came out swinging last night. I don't care what anybody says. I haven't seen Joe Biden like that in years. He was really, really sharp last night. When Fat Joe says people are motivated, he's talking about the people in his circle. In his elite celebrity bubble. Because I have spoken to people, working class people and poor people, and none of them have said that. Whether it's Biden or Trump or whoever, none of them have said that. Most people I've spoken to told me they are not participating at all. But this, 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 this fat Joe. So you see what they're doing? You see the game bringing out the celebrities to try to motivate their fan base to come out and vote. And look, we need to talk about access, right? So fat Joe was there and look at what's happening with him and Kamala Harris. Cause this is also another weak ask. Kamala Harris will host a marijuana reform event with fat Joe. So first of all, the hell do you mean reform? <laughs> what do you mean reform? It's legal in how many states now? Give me a break. You should have known it was over when once Virginia legalized it. What do you mean reform? Reform what? Let's get into this. This is Fat Joe and Kamala Harris. Vice President Kamala Harris will hold the administration's first public event on marijuana reform this week after President Biden addressed the issue as one of his priorities in last week's State of the Union address. Harris will convene a roundtable discussion in the West Wing featuring Grammy-nominated artist Fat Joe, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, and individuals who received pardons for prior cannabis convictions. 
Why are you having this round table discussion with fat Joe? These celebrities get seats at the table that the constituents never get. Now they said they're going to have a couple of people who got pardons from prior convictions or whatever. What, what, what is this discussion about? Because you don't need to have a round table to figure this out. You legalize it across the nation. It's that simple. And actually you don't need Congress to do that. President Biden can actually do that by executive order. Now, why will he not do that? Because that actually will hurt the police state. Make no mistake, Joe Biden wanted to give the police more money and he did give him more money than Donald Trump did, right? So if you legalize it across the state, some of these cops are not gonna have as much to do because I told you they don't really solve any crimes. 0.02%, we all know they're not preventing crime. They're gonna be spending more time getting donuts. Harris main portfolio includes reproductive health care, gun violence and voting rights, but she has consistently amplified criminal justice reform since her years as district attorney in California. This is a jokey joke, joke, joke because she actually targeted people in California. She targeted people. She came after parents for their kids not going to school. She imprisoned parents because their kids didn't show up in school. It just, the marijuana thing. Now all of a sudden she's supposed to be the right person in reference to marijuana. After her, you know, past experiences in California. And then it goes on here to talk about the state of the union address, two aides close to the vice president and an additional source with familiar with the role said Harris will continue to bring awareness to this issue in the coming months with events that highlight expungements, especially as the reelection campaign seeks the support. Listen to this critical of young voters and voters of color. So here it comes folks. Here it comes. I mean, if you're trying to figure out this issue, you just legalize it. You can release the people who are in jail for that. It's a plant. Now, I'm going to show you something else because it's not just fat Joe. When I talk about access and when I talk about people having access to people like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, I mean, this is the president and the vice president. It's not like you're having access to like Rashida Tlaib. She's a Congresswoman, right? You're at a different level when you have access to the president and the vice president. That is a totally different game, right? So it's not just Fat Joe. It's also David Pakman. Because David Pakman said, last week I was invited to meet with Vice President Kamala Harris at the White House to discuss a number of different issues. Super interesting experience and met some other content creators who have built massive audiences on different platforms. Yes, David, I'm sure the content creators that you met who were there with these massive platforms that you're referring to are people who are pro democratic party, just like David Pakman. So you see how this works. Look at these pictures, David Pakman, who at one point in the time called himself progressive was supporter of Bernie Sanders. Dave realized you can make more money if you just slide on over to supporting the establishment Democrats that he actually told you to fight against. So Dave decided to move with the money. So that's what happened there. Now you look at the pictures here. There's David Pakman here to the left. There's Kamala Harris right here. You don't get that close to the vice president at a table in a meeting at the White House, unless you are defending the Biden administration and you're kissing their ass. That's how it works. 
He was invited. He didn't ask to go. You don't see Kamala Harris inviting other people. I don't see Kamala Harris trying to invite people who have been critical of the Biden administration. And David Pakman has not. He's told lie after lie after lie and said, the economy is doing great and everything's da da da. Anything to kiss their butt. And that is to give you access. So what does that tell you at this point in time when you see that David Pakman, YouTuber David Pakman, has this type of access to the vice president? Do you think if Kamala Harris does something wrong, well, she's done other things wrong. You think the next time Kamala Harris does something wrong, you think the next time Joe Biden does something wrong, David Pakman is going to call them out on it? No, he's going to defend them. That's how he maintains that access. And here's another picture of him here. David Pakman. Now, why is this important? You think about Fat Joe. You think about David Pakman. You think about Charlemagne the God. These people are invited because they're not critical of the administration. These people are invited because they kiss up to the administration and they defend it at all costs. They're not seen as a threat. The administration is not going to have this type of meeting with people who are critical of them. And this is important when I get to the next segment about unity. When I talk about how we can build and move forward. Because there's some people you cannot ally with. There are some people you cannot be in an alliance with. If you that close to Kamala Harris, you this close to people like Joe Biden, these people are never going to have our best interest at heart for those who are trying to fight for issues for the real left. And I don't mean Democratic Party, that's not left. I'm talking about those who believe in universal health care, who believe in canceling student loan debt, all of it, who believe in you know, free public college. The real left, not the David Pakmans of the world. We can't al ally with those people. You can't align with the fat Joe. You can't align with the David Pakman. These people are actually going to work against our interest. And they're going to do so to protect their access to those politicians and their brand. This is where we're at now. Fat Joe and David Pakman. Let's get to the, some of the comments uh, here. Actually, I'll take the Rockfin comment first. Take that one first, Eric, and then I'll go to the super chats. Uh, thank you for the tip, Roger. Joe need to lean all the way the fuck back, Sabby. <laughs> he ain't know who Joe Biden was as senator back when he was doing his street his street shit, Sabby. I'm sure he didn't know who our own senators were back then. Matter of fact, be it Fat Joe. Joe Biden, Joe Lieberman, Joe Manchin, G.I. Joe, Cup of Joe, Morning Joe. All these Joes need to lean back instead of Joe Biden doing the rock away. He needs a rocking chair. <laughs> that was funny, Roger. That was good. Thank you, uh, Joseph. You get less unless it's for defense spending. Mm hmm. Uh, Z says, Sabi, good point about aiming high when setting negotiation parameters. Yes. Yeah, so that's something I learned from my dad. Always ask for more than what you actually want, because a lot of times the offer is going to be less than what you ask for. So always ask for more. Uh, thank you, Eliezer. Uh, CNN has a vibrator, a vibratory. Oh, what? Well, thank you, Laser. <laughs> thank you, R. Bailey. Fat Joe is about Fat Joe. And doing the rock away. I used to like that song too. Oh, you said this twice. Fat Joe is about Fat Joe. 
Thank you, Beauty and the Boomer. Sabby says it right from Beauty and the Boomer. Hey, guys, that's Chandra and uh, Oz. Uh, thank you, QWERTY. Fat Joe was Cuban and Puerto Rican. Bet you he didn't call for lifting the embargo nor addressing the celebrity settlers gentrifying the locals in Puerto Rico. Ouch. Damn, QWERTY. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jay. Didn't the Biden administration fire low level staffers for smoking marijuana? They truly think we're idiots doing crap like this. That's right. I forgot about that. Good point. 